Welcome back to Diana in the Pink. In this video, I'm going to be talking about common second trimester symptoms and how to help with them. But first, if you're new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You're watching In the Pink. And if this is your first time here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, make sure to click subscribe because you are in the right place. Now, before I get into the video, I would really love to hear from you. What brought you here? Are you pregnant? Are you thinking about getting pregnant? Or do you have a loved one that is pregnant? Put that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and I read all of my comments. Now this video is actually the second part to the topic of common second trimester pregnancy symptoms because there were so many things that I really wanted to talk about. It would have been too long to talk about it all in one video. So in my first video, I talked about skin changes, breast changes, um, stomach issues like heartburn and constipation, things like that. Eight things in total. So if you missed that, I'm gonna put a card right here so that you can check that out. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and start with number nine, picking up where I left off from the last video. So here we go. Number nine leg swelling. Your enlarging uterus also puts pressure on the vessels that go down to your legs and this can cause swelling in your feet, ankles, and calves. These were my calves at the end of my third pregnancy. Horrible for me, but immensely entertaining to my kids. Oh. Mama, that's just weird. That's just weird. This is more common in the summer when it's hot, but it can happen any time year round. Swollen legs are often worse if you are standing on your feet all day. And when this happens, the easiest thing to do is lie down in your bed or your couch with your feet on two to three pillows to elevate. If you know you're gonna be standing all day, you could pick yourself up a pair of compression stockings. Some people call them Ted hose. They really help to prevent swelling. And I like the thigh high compression stockings myself. I wore them during the last half of all four of my pregnancies. Now this is really important. Swelling of both legs equally is common during pregnancy, but if you have one leg that is swollen and the other one is not swollen, this is something that you need to have evaluated right away. This could be a symptom of a blood clot in your legs called a deep vein thrombosis or DVT. And DVTs are dangerous because the blood clot can travel up to your lungs, which is a pulmonary embolism and that's life-threatening. So one leg swollen, sometimes with redness, heat, or pain, needs to get checked out immediately. Also keep in mind that your hands can get puffy too. So if you start to notice that they're getting a little swollen, consider taking off your rings until after the baby is born. You don't want to have to have a wedding ring cut off because it got stuck on because of the swelling. Number 10, leg cramps. These are painful calf contractions that occur usually in the middle of the night. I personally really struggled with these in my second and third trimester. To make a leg cramp go away, you need to stretch your calf out. And you do this by pulling your toes towards your shin. If you have a partner, they can help you to do this. You can also try to rub your calf muscle to help them to relax, or you can do heel stretches by leaning forward against a wall. Stretching before bed, might help to prevent them and always make sure to stay hydrated too. Number 11, bleeding gums. Now I mentioned earlier the increased blood your body produces for the baby and for the delivery. Well that extra blood makes your gums bleed more easily. This is very common. About 50% of pregnant women experience bleeding gums. Just switch to a soft bristle toothbrush, still floss, but just be gentle and then be sure to continue to get your regular dental checkups. Number 12, another thing that that increased blood does is it causes nasal congestion and runny nose. So there are tiny little blood vessels in your nose that can become easily congested during pregnancy. So you might start to feel like you have a cold and because of the swelling, the mucous membrane lining inside your nose becomes more friable, which means it tears more easily. So in hot weather, you might get nosebleeds more easily. You can try over-the-counter nasal sprays or saline drops. You can also get a humidifier for your house. And then to prevent nosebleeds, you just moisten your nostrils with a little bit of petroleum jelly. Before I move on to the next one, I did want to let you know that I had a pregnancy series, 38 videos in total. In each video, I talk about your symptoms, baby development, what to expect at your appointment, and so much more. So I'll put a card right here, and also I will link to that at the end of the video, so make sure to check that out as well. Number 13, vaginal discharge. It's considered normal to have an increase in milky, white, thin vaginal discharge during pregnancy. We call this physiological leukorrhea, which means normal discharge. Not normal discharge is smelly, itchy, or burny. It can be thick, clumpy, white, or green or thick yellow. If you think you have 
abnormal discharge, talk to your OB. Don't try to treat anything on your own with over-the-counter stuff. It's best just to have your provider evaluate and test you so that if you do have an infection, they can get you on the right treatment. Number 14, dizziness. This can happen if you stand for too long in one position or if you suddenly stand from a sitting position or a lying down position, you might feel a little bit dizzy. Now, if you do, go ahead and sit down or lie down on one side. Just that position change can make the dizziness go away. Also be sure to drink a lot of water. ACOG, which stands for American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, recommends at least eight to 12 glasses of water a day. And I feel kind of like a broken record about staying hydrated, but it's that important. So make sure you're getting plenty of water. If your dizziness doesn't go away, make sure to talk to your OB because it could be a symptom of something more serious like anemia or preeclampsia. Number 15, back pain. Back pain can start pretty much anytime during your pregnancy. As your baby bump grows, your center of gravity starts to shift forward. And when this happens, we compensate by leaning our shoulders back more and that exaggerates the curvature of your back. That, plus the fact that your body is releasing a hormone called relax and that helps to loosen the ligaments for when your baby passes through your birth canal. So that, plus the posture changes, can cause back pain. And if you've had existing back problems before your pregnancy, sometimes it can make it even worse. So treatment can start with something as simple as wearing the right shoes. Now, contrary to what you might think, completely flat shoes are actually not a good idea. Low heeled shoes with proper curvature to support your foot arch is ideal. So like sports shoes basically are designed this way. And I really wanna emphasize low heels. You already look fabulous no matter what, so you don't need to be running around wearing stilettos, which not only exaggerates the curvature of your spine, but it can really throw off your balance. If you are uncomfortable, you can use hot or cold packs, honestly, whichever makes you feel better. I really struggled with back pain my first pregnancy, and this simple piece of elastic saved my back. As you can see, this thing is really old. This is just a pregnancy tummy supporter and it just wrapped around my back and under my belly. Something like this can really help to support your back and your abdomen. Now, these abdominal and back supports can be as simple as just a single strap, but you can get more complex ones that go over your shoulders, that go over your belly and under your belly and between your legs. Think of it as additional muscles that help support your growing womb and it can really take a bit of that weight from your back. Just as a disclaimer, this video isn't intended to diagnose or treat you. It's only meant to be educational. So if you have any symptoms that you are at all concerned about, be sure to get it checked out by your own OB. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, hey, give this video a thumbs up. It actually means the world to me to know that you guys appreciate this kind of content. And if you do, put in the comment section below other things that you would like me to talk about. And it doesn't have to be pregnancy. It can be anything about women's health um, or even babies or mommyhood. So let me know what you'd like to hear about next. Subscribe to Dine in the Pink if you haven't already done so. And up next, I'm gonna put my playlist all about pregnancy week by week. So make sure to click on that and I will see you over.